Hello everyone! Portable multimeters are quite useful devices, and you don't have to be an electrician to have a multimeter at home. A multimeter is the combined device for measuring electrical quantities. Standard budget multimeters can measure all popular electrical quantities, such as AC, DC voltage, current, resistance, and determine the continuity of circuits and connections using a continuity test. Let's start with the fact that there are two types of multimeters. Analog ones with a needle gauge and the more common digital ones. Analog devices are quickly becoming a thing of the past, as everyone understands that the future is digital. Digital multimeters are more compact, lightweight, and convenient to use. In turn, digital multimeters come in two types, with manual range selection and auto selection. In the first case, we have a specific meter. For example, a DC voltage meter with specific ranges. For instance, up to 200 MV, up to 2000 MV, up to 20 V, up to 200 V, and up to 1000 V. The user must select the range themselves depending on the voltage being measured. If the voltage of the source being measured is known in advance, for example, a 9 volt battery, then there are no questions. Set the limit to 20 V, and that's it. But, if you're measuring the voltage of an unknown source, you need to choose the range blindly. If the device goes off the scale, you need to increase the range by one step. The accuracy of the measurements depends on the correctly chosen range. For example, if you are measuring the voltage of a battery in volts, and the measurement limit is set to 1000V, it's clear that the accuracy of the readings will be low. In such multimeters, you need to manually select the range for almost all measurements. Current resistance, AC and DC voltage. In multimeters with auto range selection, everything is much simpler. Such multimeters are slightly more expensive, but what is required of you? For measurements, just switch to the appropriate measurement mode, for example, DC voltage. The multimeter will automatically determine the voltage value in a fraction of a second and it will display the value on the screen. It would seem that the future belongs to such multimeters, but recently fully automatic or so-called smart multimeters have started appearing on the market where the user doesn't need to select anything at all. You turn on the multimeter and measure anything you want without any switching. The multimeter will determine by itself what you are trying to do, whether you are measuring voltage in an outlet or the resistance of an unknown resistor. Used such a multimeter for a while as part of a review and concluded that at this stage, these multimeters are very raw. They do not have high accuracy, the measurement limits are not great, and there aren't many measurement options. But I hope that everything will change soon. The future belongs to such multimeters. For household needs, a regular multimeter with manual range selection is sufficient. High accuracy is not required from them. But there are areas where accuracy is paramount, which is why such multimeters are produced. This is a precision benchtop multimeter from RS, model EBM 8341. The error of this device when measuring DC voltage is minimal. And this is far from the coolest sample in the RS company's range. On their website, you can find almost any equipment. From budget models to process calibrators plus original components for your projects. Prices for my laboratory equipment from RS are reduced. Link in the description. Multimeters typically have either for three or two standard terminals. The COM is used for all measurements. The black probe is connected there. Next is the terminal that will be present in almost all measurements. The red probe is connected there. The next two terminals are used for measuring current. One is for small currents, the other for larger ones, typically up to 10A. The red probe is moved there if you need to measure current in a circuit. When measuring voltage, for example on a battery, the multimeter is set to the appropriate mode. The black probe is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the red to the positive. If you mix up the polarity of the probe connections, nothing bad will happen. You'll just see a minus sign on the multimeter display, indicating reverse polarity. This symbol can also help identify the polarity of unknown DC sources. 
In the case of measuring alternating voltage, it is necessary to switch to the appropriate range. In the popular DT830 multimeter, there are two ranges available for measuring alternating voltage up to 200V and up to 750V. Set it to 750. Insert the probes into the outlet. There's no need to worry here as there is no polarity and even if you try hard, you won't mix anything up. When measuring direct current, for example, if you need to understand how many amps a car bulb consumes to assess its power, the red probe is moved to the terminal labeled 10 amps and the multimeter is switched to the appropriate mode. Connect the bulb or another load whose current consumption needs to be measured in series with the battery and the multimeter. On the display of the latter, we will see the current value flowing in the circuit or the current consumption of the bulb. In amps. Knowing the battery voltage and the current, we multiply these two parameters to get the power in watts that the bulb will consume, per hour. Yes, per hour. If the headlight bulb of your car is 100 watts, it consumes these 100 watts from the battery. 4. An hour of operation. I can add one thing about the current meter. Be sure to move the red probe back to the regular terminal after completing the measurements. Otherwise, if, for example, you try to measure the voltage of a power source while the multimeter is in this state, you will most likely blow the built-in 10 amp fuse, which acts as a protective measure. If the multimeter is cheap, replacing such a fuse costs next to nothing. But fuses can vary. For example, in this multimeter, it costs more than $10. A meter with a diode symbol will allow you to measure the voltage drop across the diode. And in general, check if the diode is working. A diode allows current to pass in one direction and, you could say, blocks it in the other. When current passes through a diode, a voltage drop occurs on the diode's chip, which leads to the diode heating up. The more current flows through the diode, the more it will heat up. Typically, silicon diode chips have a voltage drop of about IN. This is the drop that your multimeter will measure. Set the multimeter to the appropriate mode and connect the probes parallel to the diode's leads. If nothing appears on the display, switch the connections of the probes. And we should see that voltage drop in volts. This means the diode is functioning properly. If there is still nothing on the display, it means the diode is open. Throw it in the trash. If in both directions the voltage drop across the diode is either zero or very small, the diode is also faulty. However, if in one direction there is nothing on the multimeter display and in the other direction the voltage drop is very small, for example, 0.1 to 0.2 percent, V, you have encountered a shocky diode. Such a drop is normal for them. If the multimeter is not equipped with a continuity buzzer, which is very rare and only in the cheapest multimeters, it's not a problem. You just need to switch the multimeter to resistance measurement mode and set it to the lowest value, for example, 200 ohms. Short, the probes. On the multimeter display, you will see the resistance value of the probes. Typically, this is about 1 ohm or less. If the multimeter is accurate and the probes are good, then, the resistance will be lower. Ohm. When checking the circuit, there won't be a characteristic sound, but you can tell there's contact by the low resistance. If the multimeter hesitates, it means there's a break. The continuity mode helps identify faulty diodes, transistors, check fuses, and much more. This is perhaps one of the most popular and frequently used modes. I would add to everything said that the most important factor when choosing a multimeter is the protection of the device itself. Unfortunately, many do not pay proper attention to this. The wires, cases, and internals of cheap multimeters do not provide a sufficient level of protection, not only for the multimeter's electronic circuit but also for you, the owner. For example, if you accidentally set the resistance measurement mode and plug the multimeter into the network, a cheap multimeter might fail. 
In some cases, the multimeter might even catch fire. This won't happen with expensive multimeters. The insulation of the wires is also very important. It should be thick enough, elastic, and heat resistant. In cheap probes, the wire is stiff, cracks in the cold, and can melt, for example, when in contact with a heated soldering iron. We might not notice this, and the next voltage measurement in an outlet could be fatal. There are multimeters that are, so to speak, all season, waterproof, and shock resistant. These are usually chosen for work in industrial settings. And if such a multimeter is equipped with a bunch of internal protections and carries a renowned brand name, then naturally, it costs an exorbitant amount. But they are purchased because in industrial settings, safety is prioritized. Although it all depends on the industry and the country. That's probably all for now. Rate this video, follow me on Instagram, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to join our official group. All the links are in the description. Well, for now, I'll say goodbye for a short while. As always, this was Kazian Aka with you, and until we meet again, bye.